what a promising week for the equity markets and long bonds. But will they continue higher next week? Before we get into the market analysis, I want to shout out to my subscriber, Daniel Gurney, who commented, please stop the background music. I watch because I want to hear what you have to say, not to have music blasted at me at random intervals. Now, while that might sound like it's not a compliment, it's actually a very nice compliment because Daniel is more interested in hearing what I have to say than the background music. So I really appreciate the feedback. And for this week, I'm going to leave the music out, except at the end where I'll put some Zen moments for you to enjoy after you watch the video. By the way, please let me know in the comments if you prefer my commentary with or without the background music. I'm curious to hear what you think. Let's dive into the analysis because at least the equity markets are looking like they could go higher next week. This has been a really interesting week. So as you can see, when we look back over the past week, the equity markets uh, had a very nice rally going into Thursday, and then Thursday we had a pullback, and then on Friday they came right back, um, ending the week looking fairly healthy. Uh, the S&P was up, uh, the Dow was not up, that's fine with me. The NASDAQ was up the most, that's actually really good. The small caps finished a little bit lower, and ARK Innovation finished higher. So this is generally a fairly healthy week coming out of not a very good month. And if we look at the past month, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is very unhealthy. You've got ARK down the most, you've got small caps here, and then the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and the Dow all kind of bunched together here. So this is pretty unhealthy looking. And what if we look at year to date? Well, we still have a, somewhat of a healthy rally, although ARK has started to collapse. It's now below the NASDAQ. But if we look overall, these are some pretty good gains and some very healthy gains over the last year to date. Let's take a look at the bottom dynamics because these have a lot of information in them. And you can see here, this is the S&P 500, the black line. We've had a pullback here, which has been somewhat painful. You can see that the bottom forming indicator, this orange line, was up here at 100%, but the confidence level never really got high here. So it was saying, yeah, this looks like a bottom, but the confidence level wasn't high. So where are we right now? Well, as you can see, the bottom forming indicator has pulled back. The bottom confirmation indicator has moved higher. But the confidence level is shooting a lot higher here for risk, and it's falling for safety. This tells me we're going higher next week. And if I was going to make a bet, that's the bet I would make. But there's no guarantees. Now, that's assuming nothing bad happens. There's no bad news. You know, all that stuff that can go wrong. But right now, this looks very promising going into next week. And what about risk versus opportunity? Now, these are the old metrics. Um, you can see what's happened here. Uh, risk acceleration absolutely went through the roof. And in fact, when it hit back here, we took risk off of our clients' accounts. Now you can see what's happening. It's absolutely collapsing. And the risk, the red line, is also collapsing. Now, what's interesting is the opportunity level using these old metrics is also falling somewhat, but it's still very, very high up here above 80. When this blue line is up here above 80, that's good in general. When these risk metrics are up here above 80, that's really bad. So this looks like an improving market, and we'll see how this plays out when we look at the rest of the tables and charts and the metrics. You'll be, it'll be interesting to see how this is showing up everywhere else. And if we look at the new metrics, now remember we're testing these out, so I don't really quite know how to read these yet. But you can see back here, this, gave, this was a good time to actually get out of the way. This was very timely. Uh, we didn't act on it because these are too new. Uh, but you can see another reason this was a good time to get out is because you can see that the opportunity level was just declining, declining, declining while this was shooting up. Now, next time this happens, we may take action on it, uh, but we didn't know really quite how to read these. These are fairly new metrics. We think there's, there's certainly a lot of value in them for picking individual investments. Um, I've shown that in a previous video that uh, using these 
to select stocks or ETFs results in higher performance than the old metrics. But as a risk metric, we're not quite sure yet how these work out. But what you can see happened here is that risk acceleration collapsed, and then it shot up again here uh, as of late. And you can see, but you can see that the risk level, this red line, stayed way down here the whole time. And just recently, these last couple of days, has started moving higher. But what's interesting is the opportunity level is also moving higher here. So yeah, some conflicting signals on this side of the fence. But I think um, overall, the markets are showing more improvement than this is indicating right now, except for this increasing opportunity level here. And you'll see some of that here when we look at equity versus safety. So if we look at the NASDAQ 100, it's been really interesting. I actually finally went back and counted. The NASDAQ 100 was up here in the number one position for 12 weeks. That's a long time. But you can see what happened more recently. Dropped, came back up, dropped down, dropped down further, stayed here. And now it's starting to move up a little bit. This is a good sign. Let's look at uh, what's going on with cash, because we always like to follow the money, right? Follow the cash, as they say. So cash went sideways here, uh, started to move up, which gave me concern, moved up a lot, which gave me a lot of concern, uh, moved up to number one. This is really scary. This is not good, not healthy, and stayed here, not healthy. This is an unhealthy-looking market when you have cash and short-term treasuries and intermediate treasuries ranked one, two, and three. But there is some glimmer of hope here. And let's take a look at what that might be. So if we take a look at IWM, small caps, I'm not going to go. You can see they were, they were in first back here. Uh, and then they came down here. Then they really collapsed. And then they really collapsed. But here's where the hope comes in. Look at where they are now. They moved up and sprinted ahead of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and SPY. So this is looking like an appetite for risk in the short term, and hopefully it'll hold. Now, the treasury market still looks fairly unhealthy, but there was some switch in sentiment that I'll show you this week where investors started to pile into these longer-term treasuries because they were so beaten down that they represent a really good bargain, as you've heard me say in my previous videos. And how does all of this show up in the buying and selling pressure? Well, if we look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see that the selling pressure has collapsed and the price ticked up higher and the buying pressure is moving higher. This is encouraging. What about SPY? Same thing, even better. The, the buying pressure is above the selling pressure and moving higher. What about the NASDAQ 100? Again, collapsing selling pressure, increasing buying pressure, and ARK Innovation, buying pressure above the selling pressure and moving higher. This looks really promising going into next week. And then we talked about small caps, how, how they've moved up the chain in equity versus safety. Well, you can see some of that here. The selling pressure has been falling and finally collapsed on Friday. And the selling pressure is really starting to shoot up here. So again, this looks very healthy going into next week. Now let's take a look at sector rankings because these give a, sort of a fuller picture of what's going on in the market. Now these are the old metrics, but if we look at last week, this top table, you can see this looks very healthy. We had Bitcoin number one, technology, technology, uh, consumer discretionary way up here, semiconductors. This is great. This looks fabulous. And cash and consumer staples, I'd like to see them more to the right down here, uh, but they are further down the chart. Now, if we move ahead to this week, again, it still looks healthy. Bitcoin, technology, technology again, consumer discretionary still here. <laughs> it almost looks like the same table. Uh, we've got semiconductors here. We've got ARC Innovation here. And then you can see that cash has actually moved down and treasuries have moved down. So this is looking a little bit more healthy this week from last week. Uh, what happened to IWM? Let's see. IWM was here last week, way down here. And where was it this week? Oh, it'd be helpful. Oh, it actually moved down a little bit in this 
ranking using the older metrics. So that's, that doesn't line up with what we saw in equity versus safety. Well, let's see wh where this might show up and give us a, a better view. Now, if we look at the new metric, let's see what happened with IWM. So last week, IWM was here. And this week, IWM is still in the same place. So no movement here. But maybe the movement will show up in sector rank acceleration. I'll talk about that when we get there. But what are we seeing with the new metric? Last week, Bitcoin technology, just like the old metric, ARK innovation up here, consumer discretionary up here, technology again, cash and treasuries way down here. This looks really, really good last week. And what about this week? Well, Bitcoin, uh, consumer discretionary, technology again, uh, again, technology, emerging companies, Innovation, ARK Innovation slipped down here a bit, but again, cash and treasuries and consumer staples all down here at the bottom, exactly where you want to see them. Now let's look at sector rank acceleration. Maybe this will give us some insight into what's going on with small caps. But what did we see last week? Well, where were small caps? A lot of list here. Small caps were way down here uh, last week. And where are they this week? They've moved all the way up here. So you can, you can see that move that we saw in equity versus safety here. But where were things last week? Well, we had technology, technology, consumer discretionary up here. But you can see the cash, treasuries, and gold were way up here. This is not what you want to see. Now, if we move to this week, uh, consumer discretionary has moved all the way up to number one. That's fabulous. That's where you want to see it. Arc Innovation up here. Golden cash kind of still hovering here where you don't want them. Uh, I do like the fact that IWM moved up like this and treasuries in, as a whole moved down. So less of a flight to safety here. This looks pretty good. What if we look at the new metrics? So if we look at the new metrics, what happened to IWM? IWM was here and it actually moved down. In, in acceleration with the new metrics. So that doesn't jive with what we saw in equity versus safety. But let's see, how, how did things look last week? Well, we had Bitcoin up here. We had uh, IWM here, the Dow here, uh, semiconductors here, consumer staples. You can see consumer discretionary was way down here and consumer staples were up here. That's looking somewhat unhealthy and treasuries and cash and gold all up here. Now they weren't up here all the way at the top, but still I'd rather see them down over here to the right. Now, where are we this week? Well, let's see, we've got energy number one, um, healthcare, that's a safety haven. Um, we've got cash moving up, that doesn't look good. We've got treasuries moving up a bit, um, but then consumer staples moved down a bit, consumer discretionary moved up a bit. So yeah, this really isn't telling us much here with these new metric sector rank acceleration metrics. That was a mouthful. Uh, so anyway, again, we're, we're testing these out. We're seeing how they work. And, and if they really don't add value or, or add value in a particular way, we'll figure that out going forward. But it's kind of putting us on the line here to show you this and, and, and show you what we're seeing and then see how it plays out down the road. And how did treasuries perform last week? Well, as you'll see when we go through the buying and selling pressure, you'll see the reason why they perform so well. You can see the longest duration treasuries finished the best up here. Uh, 20 year bonds finished second. And then all the shorter term treasuries finished down here. And by the way, I want to take this opportunity to point you at a video that I watched this week. It's a really good video on government treasuries and bonds in general and sort of how they work and what the risks are and, and sort of how to think about them. So I'm going to leave a link in the pinned comments below to this video by Prana Wealth called Time to Sell Treasury Bonds? Question mark. And you can see the, the title on the thumbnail is U.S. Debt Risky? Question mark. This is a really good video if you're rusty or you don't understand how bonds work and treasuries work. I highly recommend you, you give it a watch. So again, link in the pinned comments below. But let's get back to treasuries. So if we look over the past month, you can see that we've had a very unhealthy treasury market with longest duration, highest risk treasuries finishing dead last and with the shorter ones finishing first, but all of them down 
over the past month, and what about year to date? So year to date, uh, if you remember last week, I said, oh my God, we're right down here at the bottom. Uh, and, and you can see how they've shot up since then. So that was a great buying opportunity back then. And then look at, let's look over the past five years, because that really gives you a sense of where we are. And here was the previous bottom, October 21st, 2022. And we are, you know, last week we were right, right about there. So um, unless long interest rates go a lot higher, this could end up being the bargain of of us of a decade anyway let's put it that way so how does all of this market action show up in the buying and selling pressure well last week and the week before you can well you can kind of see it here in the chart the the, the buying pressure was in short treasuries these are one to three year treasuries so they're sort of shorter term but you can see the buying pressure well above the selling pressure going back pretty far here well what's happening this week well this week the selling pressure is shooting up here at the short end. Uh, intermediate end, uh, you can see the selling pressure above the buying pressure. Uh, longer term, seven to 10 years, I call these intermediate to long treasuries. You can see that the selling pressure is collapsing here and the buying pressure is increasing. And now if we go to the long bond, where are we? Investors are starting to pile into these, and you saw that in the price action over the last week. So the buying pressure is moving higher, and it's above the selling pressure, which appears to be collapsing. So maybe this is a, a good sign for a run higher in the, in the long bonds. Let's hope so. And what about that inverted yield curve? Oh boy, here we go. So if we take a look at the yield curve, here's the yield curve. You can see a year ago we were not inverted. So 20-year rates were much higher than two-year rates, which is not an inversion. That's a normal yield curve. And then a month ago, we were more inverted. You can see the rates up here are much higher than the 20-year rates. But as you can see over the last month or so, yields have gone up in the 20-year, but they've stayed kind of put at the, at the one and two-year. They haven't moved up as much. So the yield curve has become a little less inverted, uh, but it's still very inverted, and I'll show you that uh, in the next one. But you can see we're 84 basis points inverted here, and I'll show you that in the next graph. Um, and what about the Fed meeting coming up in September? Well, right now, uh, the markets are saying there's an 80% chance that they will not raise rates at all, even though the Fed kind of was banging on the drum and rattling their saber this last week saying that you know they could make rates go higher uh i i kind of my gut tells me that that's not going to be necessary that the indicators they watch are going to start showing more moderate inflation and that they won't need to raise rates and i think that's what the market's saying here and then if we look back in this graph this gives you a real picture now march is falling off here but back here in March, we were 110 basis points, or 1.1% inverted. That's really ugly. Uh, things tried to kind of correct here. We got really inverted again, another bounce lower. We were actually doing pretty well earlier this week. I mean, 64 basis points inverted is not great, but it's better than way down here. But you can see that things have fallen off again. So I don't know. This is going to take a while to... Uh, sort of play out and we'll just have to wait and what about gold man that's been a losing place to be but you can see that uh, we had a big rally back here uh, it, the price has just been falling 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 selling pressure going through the roof here and then recently it's sort of turned the corner selling pressure collapsing and buying pressure increasing i um, not sure what's driving it but um, like I said, gold is a really tough thing to invest in. Uh, it's not correlated to anything. It's certainly a tough thing to trade. I would not trade it. Um, if I were going to invest, I would have a very small amount in my portfolio just to have a non-correlated asset in there. But um, generally, we stay away from gold. And, and worse yet, the, the gold ETF, GLD, has some wacky tax ramifications that you really don't want to have to deal with if you're holding it in a taxable account. So definitely don't hold it there. And how about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin, we had a big rally back here when 
BlackRock and Fidelity were talking about a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, that's kind of fallen off the chart now. You can see that the general price trend has been down and selling pressure just through the roof here. But I like the fact that the selling pressure is starting to fall off and the buying pressure is increasing, even though the price declined over here on Friday. So um, hopefully this will turn around and things will start to look better for Bitcoin. If you watch my previous videos, you'll know that last week I was beginning to fear this downturn in the markets could be more than just the August doldrums while everyone's away on vacation. Thankfully this week, it appears the health of the markets could continue to improve next week, and maybe, just maybe, September will be better. Until next week, I'm Calvin Rose, and thank you for watching Invest Smarter. And here's that music I promised. That's all for now. Knocking at